Hello, my name is Luca Castellani and I am the secretary of Working Group 4 of the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. I'm very glad to be with you today to share some views from Ancitral on certain aspects of the digital economy uh, with particular regard to PKI. Why do we want to, to uh, promote the digital economy? Because this is a way to support sustainable economic development. And uh, we have seen that recently uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, which has highlighted the need to automate certain business processes and to reduce human interaction. We know that a strong digital economy is the result of three elements. The wise policy choices, the robust technical infrastructure, and enabling legal framework. Um, may I add, the legal framework has to be enabling domestically, but also across borders. We are increasingly aware of it. Ancitral has been active in this field uh, since the late 1980s and has produced a truly successful text. Uh, but where are we in general where, with the, the harmonization of the law of electronic transactions and of electronic signatures? Uh, there has been good progress, but uneven in the different regions. So, we have some regions where the ancestral model has been adopted in a more uniform manner, and others where it has less. Um, what is uh, important for PKI is the ancestral approach to electronic signatures is technology neutral. Uh, that is to say, uh, there is no uh, requirement or favor for the use of any specific technology. And uh, we see this increasingly also in the free trade agreements, although there are also exceptions. And I would like to point out, for instance, there is a recent work on uh, PKI-specific uh, cross-border recognition mechanism in Latin America, in what is called the Alianza del Pacifico. Uh, but, uh, on the other hand, we know that there are limits uh, as to something that is quite uh, common, uh, especially in Central Asia, and is the mandatory use of the national uh, PKI uh, standards. Uh, this creates problems to cross-border recognition. Um, in some developing countries, it is a problem to create and maintain the National Certification Authority. And uh, we have seen recently, this is an issue also to the use, for the use of blockchain, because uh, blockchain does not necessarily use the national standard, and therefore this is considered as a foreign blockchain, and it's, it's, it's not given legal status. So, yes, we can see still a lot of use of PKI, we can see legal presumptions attached to it, but at the same time uh, we also have issues when PKI is the only form of electronic signatures recognized in the law, and we have to get over this, like Russia did by amending its 2002 law. Uh, one text of prepared by Ancestral that is uh, very dear to me is the Electronic Communications Convention, uh, Convention on the Use of Electronic Communications in International Contracts, which gives a higher level of uh, uniformity and legal predictability 
And among other things, allows also the cross-border recognition of electronic signatures in business-to-business -business exchanges. So it's important because it, is, it has been popular uh, in Asia. Uh, Russia has adopted it. Azerbaijan has adopted it. Uh, Mongolia is in the final steps of adopting it. So very good support, and we expect more countries to join it. Um, at the same time, the question is, what is the awareness of business about this tool? It is, of course, a very strong legal tool in the box, but we are not sure that business is fully aware of it, and we would like to see more ownership and more application. Um, with respect to PKI and blockchain, I would also like to stress uh, in 2017, Ancetral has adopted the model law on electronic transfer records. Um, this is about the use in electronic form of certain uh, transferable documents or instruments like bills of lading, like uh, promissory note, bills of exchange, to some extent also letters of credit. Uh, this document is very important for logistics and for trade financing. Um, there were some specific issues that have been fully addressed. And what is important here is that in the explanatory note, there are also some um, examples, or there is some guidance on how to implement these with uh, distributed ledgers, blockchain and similar technology. Um, issues like pseudonymity, um, these are addressed there. It, it, and it's interesting, it's the first time that I see uh, operational discussion of this in a legal text. Um, this is, uh, of course, uh, very good. There is a discussion, very important discussion, that I much invite you to join at the UN CFACT. There is a group on the implementation of this model, which is called MELITA or MLETR. And this is led by Singapore, because Singapore has a vision. Uh, a national, the next uh, national trade platform of Singapore, which is called Trade Trust. And uh, this probably will be blockchain based, so a lot of PKI will be used. Um, and it will put together all B2B and B2G transactions. It's an ecosystem and it's not necessarily a single facility. It can be different facilities uh, which are interoperable and are interacting. And I believe this could be really interesting also uh, from the perspective of the implementation of the transboundary trust space. Uh, which is, of course, important for the Eurasian community and, and uh, for our applications. So um, I would very much encourage you to get more information on these and to get involved. Um, national trade platforms, single windows. I would like to spend a word to mention the work that has been done in the single windows as drivers of uh, the g digitization of trade. Uh, we know there is still a piecemeal approach. We know only now we are starting to discuss uh, the legal aspects, especially those across borders. Uh, we know one issue is different legal standards for uh, submission of data to customs as opposed to business to business exchange uh, but at the same time I would also like uh, to uh, point out uh, that uh, ESCAP has concluded uh, uh, a few years ago the framework agreement on the facilitation of cross-border paperless trade in Asia and the Pacific it's under consideration in Russia a few countries have already uh, adopted it and uh, China has now announced it will ratify it and it needs only one more state to enter into force. And when it will enter into force, it will be a very useful facility to promote technical interoperability, mutual legal recognition, and especially it's a facility to exchange um, lessons learned, best practices, and provide technical assistance to the countries in need. Last but not least, uh, what is Anstar doing now and what it might be doing soon? 
uh, working group four is currently conducting work on uh, the legal aspects of uh, identity management and uh, trust services. Um, this is uh, an important work that uh, builds on the EIDAS regulation. Um, and what is relevant for PKI is that uh, we open up trust services beyond electronic signatures. So uh, there is a uniform approach and that would include also things like time stamping and assurance of integrity, which is typical of PKI. Uh, but of course, there are two different uh, approaches still. One is the white listing approach. This is to say um, some service providers are uh, um, accredited or certified or however wise uh, they are uh, um, pre-assessed in the quality of their services. And, and of course, the other approach, which is uh, the traditional uh, ancestral approach, uh, is uh, for a so-called ex-post assessment of uh, reliability. Uh, that is to say that uh, we will look into each service only in case there is a dispute and otherwise we would take it that uh, uh, there is no need to look into it because the parties are happy with it. Um, there is also a very important line of work uh, that has to do with uh, um, the future of the digital economy. Uh, there are some studies that have been compiled and prepared on the basis of preparatory meetings. Um, there's a number of issues there, including smart contracts. Uh, personally, I don't think uh, smart contracts needs blockchain. I think a smart contract is probably not a contract. It's probably not smart and definitely should be technology neutral. Uh, but some people think so. So a uh, big guy comes back there. But in particular, I would like to point at the possible work on artificial intelligence on uh, transactions in data and especially uh, on tokenization of assets, including cryptocurrencies. All of these things um, are available, the documents are available on the Answer website. Uh, my slides have links to the documents. Of course, they're available also in Russian. So I very much invite you to take a look at them and maybe also take a look at uh, the webinars we did on Ancestral Text and the response to COVID-19, also available on our website, and which highlight two, two webinars in particular on the digital economy, one on the work on identity management and trust services, and the other one on trade facilitation and the response to COVID-19. And I think you will find much food for thought also there. Thank you so much, and I look forward to further interaction. Thank you.